Welcome to the Market Mindset. We are the hub for news, results, and CEO interviews focusing in the junior commodities sector. We provide market analysis and perspective that will help position you for solid returns. If that sounds like something you're interested in, you can help support us by liking this video, subscribing to our channel, and clicking the notification bell. For more info, you can visit our website. All links are in the description below. Now let's get into today's video. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Market Mindset. Uh, it's great to catch up with John Pasolacqua over at First Phosphate, CEO, uh, founder of the company as well. Lots of great news over the past year, uh, and you've had a couple in the last week, but uh, this latest news release, let's just start with that one because that's a great, great start to put, put things into context of all the work you've done and where this can go. Yeah, I mean, uh, so, you know, I, I guess what we understand is that, you know, with American Battery Factory, um, they're going to be needing up to 40,000 tons of LFP cathode active material by 2028, just on their first uh, gigafactory. And they need source, they need source of phosphate, source of iron, source of lithium to build this. And they're recognizing it right from the very beginning, that that is the biggest constraint is the raw material. So they've come to first phosphate uh, to coordinate uh, the, uh, you know, the, those materials um, together with with their operations, so that we're building it real from from the start, right, right, right from the beginning. They have to onshore, you know, almost half a billion dollars to a billion dollars of batteries that are already being sold in North America with fully, um, you know, North American uh, uh, products. Yeah, I love that quote in your uh, press release. It says like raw material bottlenecks, not technology, will be the single largest impediment to the rollout of fully localized LP batteries in North America. That's the uh, American Battery Factory President Major General John S. Kem. Uh, so I mean, that's that, that highlights that incredible need uh, for this, the the supply of raw materials. People have just assumed like, oh, we're just going to get it, and that's certainly not the case. The other thing, and maybe you can comment on it, is what's very interesting about this is that the connection with the uh, uh, Department of Defense, with the military, having someone like that as a president on a company on a battery manufacturing scale. I think would be quite uh, quite a, a strong move uh, in the U.S. especially. Yeah, I mean, you know, philosophically, American Battery Factory, uh, you know, echoes all of the same philosophy as First Phosphate. Um, ever since the beginning, we wanted to create a fully North American based supply chain. I mean, there there are other companies in in the in, in the auto space and in other spaces looking to onshore certain parts of their battery supply, but not all of them. And they want to kind of cheat when they can and get a cheaper element here or do this that way or that way. But the philosophy of American battery factory is no, we're going to have a full, fully North American supply chain from A to Z. And it fits in well exactly with what, you know, first phosphate stands for. And I think you need to take that kind of a position, um, you know, not, 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 not uh, against any other countries in the world. It's great. It's great to be able to cooperate, but, you know, you either want to go for a fully independent uh, supply chain or you don't. Um, you know, we're very open internationally to, to everything out there, to cooperating um, as far as, you know, creating these, these the LFP battery supply chain. First Phosphate wants to work with partners that want to create a fully North American based uh, supply chain where we can control, you know, our, our own destiny, our own politics, our own logistics. And above all, you know, our own in, environmental standards. Yes. Like having that, uh, like, you know, right from ground to end use uh, with a supply chain that's in, in countries that are stable, uh, have long-term relationships and you know the costs, they're they're not going to vary quite as much if you have to throw them on a tanker and send them acro across the world. That adds a lot of stability and, uh, you know, uh, dependability for making such huge long-term plans, say with like the Inflation Act is you want to make sure that a lot of these dollars aren't just going to be wasted or going towards costs that are just, uh, that can't be mitigated against. And this Build the chain, and it lets people know, like as a shareholder, or if they're looking at the stock. Of course, there's going to be lots of things in this MOU to meet over the course of the next couple of years, but it lets them know this is what it looks like. Like this is what it could end up being: is forty thousand tons going to a company like this, and the number, the size of what that means. It gives people a bit of a snapshot as to where this company is going. Yeah, I mean that's just their first gigafactory, and that's you know already half a billion to a billion dollars of just raw materials alone. You know the batteries once are manufactured you know, go up from there. So we're talking about, you know, some very serious, large um, sort of shifts in the way things are to be done. It's always hard for people to comprehend them at the at the beginning, but it's these sort of, you know, intentions, these MOUs that, that we put together that 
you know, come kind of, you know, give, give the direction of where we're going, then obviously it's a lot of hard work and it's, you know, a lot of daily phone calls and we got to get there. But at least now we establish sort of, you know, the working relationships to be able to get there. And that allows us, you know, to, to, to work on procuring the capital and, and whatever else it might be to, to get to those, um, to those end goals. Yeah. Cause a lot of times say if you're a mining company for lithium in the past or something else that was even needed, you're just going to go ahead and, and get your PA. You're going to work on the mining aspect and then at some point far down the line, you might consider reaching out to some sort of user, whereas right away, you've been engaged in that process almost from the very, very start uh, with people that you would like to work with. Uh, and I think that leapfrogs this. It, it not only shows that you understand the speed of which we need this, uh, but uh, also that the end users are starting to really realize, holy smokes, I better lock in some of these materials. And who better, especially if they're looking from the States, than to look to Canada as a huge resource country that has a lot of skill and a lot of expertise in this to, to be able to uh, supply that to them. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've been all about, you know, from mine all the way down to the, the, the full supply chain since the beginning. We've had that view. We think it's important. I think it's important for us to stick to what we do best, which is obviously, you know, mining, um, bringing phosphate out of the ground, creating purified phosphoric acid. But then from there, you know, um, working with partners, create LFP, cathode active material and finished goods, um, you know, is really important because supply chain integrity is everything um, from A all the way to, to Z. I know that I don't want to, you've got a couple other news releases that are important. I mean, that, that one is just, it's a huge and a big one. I, I want people to reach out to me, send me an, uh, a message uh, and we'll get, if you've got questions for John, I can get them to him. But you also have, uh, from about two months ago, you had positive results from a PA on, on like La Um, And of course, First Phosphate reports their assays on Saguenay as well. So maybe kind of put those two, squish those two together to give people a bit of a glimpse and a catch up as to how that is going. Yeah, well, I mean, I think what you see is a, is a, is a real progression of the business. And in order to sign this agreement with American Battery Factory, they wanted to see that certain things were in place. So the fact that we have a, a preliminary economic assessment and have been able to advance our our our, our deposits is, is really important. Um, so they know that we're going into the next uh, stage here, which will be you know a pre-feasibility and a feasibility study um, at La Calarinal or one of our other projects. Now that we've understand the economics, um, so that was important. Um, number two is you know also uh, with with Preon, we've been able to create a very high purity merchant grade phosphoric acid. The next step is to create purified phosphoric acid. We're sure that's going to happen because when MGA is very pure, like what we've created, the PPA will not be difficult. So that really unleashes the ability to, you know, then move into these supply chains to make the LFP cathode active material. So those are really two found, really foundational, um, you know, pieces of work that the company has achieved, which allowed us to secure this uh, MOU with American Battery Factory. And it's great because at the beginning, you had explained to us uh each step of the way, it's not just a matter of getting something out of the ground and that's it. It has to be purified up to a specific le you know, level. Not only that, the source material had to be uh, a certain percentage anyway, which made this, this property and Quebec in particular a uh, very valuable region uh, because this high-grade phosphate to start with isn't that easy to find uh, uh, anyway. Never mind, will it and can it be broken down or, or sorry, enhanced up? Uh, to this, the high grade phosphoric acid. So you had to kind of bring that that step up. Um, so that's why it's so important to have the results from your merchant grade, from your uh, sorry, from your pilot plants, to show that yes, we can do this. And then next step would be at scale. Yeah, it's it's all it's all a progression. It's it's you know it's an all A to Z. You know, um, takes its time. We've we've been moving very diligently and very cautiously. And you know, now we're here. Now we're here at the level where we can start entertaining some 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 major offtake agreements. And I mean, I, I I usually try to stay away from stock price and and all that. It's a challenging market. We all know that. But I, uh, you know, people kind of say, well, why you know why is it at thirty cents? And I say, well, listen, I honestly, I mean, you may not want to hear this, but like, I don't care because I can buy more cheaply. <laughs> because long term, you guys have done so much in the course of a year that I I'm trying to think of companies. And like, especially mining, that I'd be able to get this much done and to set up a, a plan that's kind of, I mean, even though there's lots of work here and this is the beginnings, it's mapped out. If I mean, you're telling people, this is what it could look like. Here's the future of what it look, looks like. Now, if we just put in the hard work, it could come together. This, uh, I mean, I mean I'm, I'm not trying to be too much of a fanboy, but it's, it's really looking quite exciting and you're doing what you said you're going to do and you're doing it ahead of time. Uh, so for me, uh, it's it, the market will sooner or later come around, but to see uh, a stock like this, that's 
priced exceptionally <laughs> for someone like myself uh, to me is great because I've got lots of patients. Yeah, no, it's great. I mean, obviously, I won't comment on stock price, but um, you know, we're we're just trying to we're trying to build a business, and uh, you know, eventually, we you know, the, the efficient market hypothesis, you know, eventually will will play out. We hope, and um, you know, we will be valued where we need to be valued. Um, but you know, really, uh, really long long roads in the battery metal space, um, roads that have to be very meticulously thought out, and that's what we're doing. We're just building a business here, one day at a time, and getting up every day and giving it an honest go. I think that as a final thought is reminding people that this is building a business. It isn't just looking at a stock price, waiting for a press release, uh, you know, waiting for two weeks for uh, so, some news that you think might cause the stock to go up. This is fully like from ground up delivering what everyone wants. I mean, we, we all see on the news, uh, you know, the, the, the goals for 2030 or, or, or it's, it's a long road to get to there. The amount of material that's needed and the amount of batteries we're going to need. So this is a great opportunity to look at a company that's doing the work. It's a long-term play, but you're you're doing things in a hurry. Uh, and we couldn't be more impressed over here with what with the amount that you've got done so far. And uh, you've certainly set yourself up uh, for a lot of success. And it's all the hard work up until now. Uh, and uh, and it's good to see that just even regular news and mainstream news is coming out. They're talking a lot about not just the lithium side either. It is the, the lithium phosphate side. They're adding that in. And with the plants that, that are going up, two in Ontario and one in Quebec, uh, that, that's, you know, uh, Volkswagen. There's the Ford one that just came out, was it last week? Um, Ford, Ford has mentioned, yeah, something with CATL. Goshen um, has been involved. Goshen, there's yeah. Been, there's been a group with Don, Donler involved. Um, there's quite a few of these uh, sort of plans coming out there, quite a few of these gigafactories. Um, I, I don't see any any kind of mention around the, where the raw materials are going to come from. Um, and I try to probe around and I'm still waiting for answers. But let's see that. I think that's the, that's the exciting part about it. And that's the exciting part about First Phosphate is that, you know, we've been planning this raw material strategy here for a very long time. So I, I want to thank you for, you know, I know you're busy for jumping on and getting this uh, quick interview out. Uh, but uh, once again, congratulations on all the news, but especially this this latest MOU. And uh, just keep keep working hard, put your head down, and we're looking forward to, to hearing more that comes out from, uh, from First Phosphate. Great. Thank you, Andrew. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much, John. All the best. Take care.